Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're having a good day. We're starting this episode underwater because that's probably where we're going to be spending most of this episode. Although not here, we're planning on going elsewhere to do a bit of deep sea diving. But I thought I would start off this episode by checking out what the progress is on the sugarcane farm build over here. And specifically this kind of walkway area around the front. I still haven't quite tidied up the railing along the top there, but I decided to replace the dirt pile with this and I'll come a little bit closer so you can see what I've done here. I figured it would be a, a sort of miscellaneous array of wooden objects just to give a little bit of character to this area, make it feel like a kind of, like a, almost not quite a dock situation, but sort of at least a, a storage area, a place where things are being packed to be shipped out. And right now it's looking very eclectic. It's got chests everywhere that don't have any content. It's got crafting tables and logs and so forth, sticking mainly with a an oak wood palette here because the rest of this is all spruce and dark oak so it separates this stuff down here from the stuff that's up there and kind of makes it feel like something a little bit different. The occasional spruce plank here and there and spruce trap doors which are wonderful for making little barrels like this before barrels eventually get added in Minecraft 1.14 but those barrels even can't contain any water whereas if you make four trap doors kind of around the outside of a water block like that amazingly the water block stays stationary when you open them but it can look like a barrel of water and for some reason, I think because this crafting table is here, there we go. The, the way water fluid physics work, it tries to emulate the idea that it's flowing from somewhere, even when there's like a block adjacent to it like that. So that's why for some reason, yeah, the, uh, the, the water is like sloping up towards that corner. Looks a little bit wonky, but then again, it could just be sloshing around inside the barrel or something. I don't know. Anyway, I figured I would show you guys that up at the top of this episode because we're not really going to be spending much time here at the base at all. We are going to go on a trip today to locate our first ocean monument. I've actually seen a couple of them while I've been flying around the world, but I haven't been tempted to stop at any of them because I want to do this the kind of legit way, I guess, and use the Ocean Explorer map that we traded from a cartographer several episodes ago. In fact, it's a cartographer from the original village I discovered, which I haven't, haven't been back to for a little while. But that was in the ender chest at the last count. Yes, this Ocean Explorer map here, where we are currently, if I can actually get this into both of my hands, we are in the bottom right-hand corner of the map, which means we need to be headed northwest in order to find this. Now, those patches over there next to the ocean monument, which is clearly marked there in that kind of cyan color, those are nearby islands. The rest of it is all ocean, and that those are some islands where we should hopefully be able to set up a nether portal. So I'm going to fly over there with a decent amount of obsidian in my inventory, and uh, we're going to, going to establish a nether portal there so that we can return there nice and easily. Because once we've done that, we have some preparations we need to make before we can actually go and raid the monument itself. But the first step, of course, is going to be to find it. And I have one obsidian. Okay, time to find a lava lake. I figured the best patch of obsidian to come back to would be the one we created in the last episode over here in the snowy tiger biome, and I almost didn't spot it because it's already started to be covered over with snow. The snowfall that we created in the last episode, thanks to that command, has partially covered this whole pool of obsidian. While I'm here, I'm actually going to gather enough for two nether portals, one for the overworld side and one for the nether side, especially because I'm basically out of obsidian right now. I think it may, we may as well gather as much as we possibly can, but it's starting to get dark here so I don't want to linger for too long. And after a quick trip home to sleep we're going to take to the air and try and scout out the location of this first map. There's our swamp nether portal which seems like as good a place as any to start. I don't think we should be too far away because there are probably quite a few ocean monuments out here in this large ocean area. Yes in fact we are starting to creep towards the center of the map here the further we go west. So hopefully once we turn north like this, we should stumble upon one sooner or later. In fact, that is one right there that isn't even the one we're looking for on our map, but that one is kind of in the middle of nowhere. So I don't think we necessarily want to stick around this one, but that might be one to, you know, scout out the location of in future. I can see the dolphins swimming down there. All right. Looks like we might be coming onto the map relatively soon. That's another one down there. Is, <laughs> is this seriously not the one we're going to? I guess it's going to pick one that's got islands nearby. Yes, that's the one. Okay, looks like we're heading onto the map here. And our ocean monument should be dead ahead right next to this picturesque scenic little island over here with a couple of trees hanging out here. Oh, and there's cows and everything. How lovely. 
That's actually going to be kind of useful, actually. I need a bucket of milk in a minute, but <laughs> not to worry. It looks like we've got a good location here, actually. This will be a great place to start what we will eventually do with this place. But this is an ocean monument, folks, an ocean temple. And these are quite common, as you <laughs> might have seen. When you get into large ocean biomes like this... Oh, there are some icebergs over there in the distance. Very cool. Yeah, when you get into large ocean areas like this, you're going to find a few of these dotted around. And they are the only place, as I have mentioned before... That we can acquire this building material here, Prismarine. And it's quite an attractive building material now, especially since they've added slabs and stairs for it in the update 1.13, the update Aquatics. So as we can see, this place is quite large and we will need a few preparations to be in place here before we actually raid this thing. And I'll show you why in a second, but for now, we're going to make our nether portal here. I'm probably going to build it into the sand on the side of this island here and I think we will head back to the base first and I'll show you the preparation phase because this is actually pretty important. So now we're back at the farmhouse it is time to prep and we need a good deal of prep to attack one of these ocean monuments not the very least because it is underwater and <laughs> right now even with a respiration and aqua affinity on my helmet my underwater breathing time is limited to a fairly short span so what we want to do is make some water breathing potions for that we will need some nether wart and some puffer fish and a brewing stand like normal so we'll pop that in there and these are just like any of the other potions that deliver effects, things like night vision and fire resistance. Water breathing potions can last for either three minutes or eight minutes. And we're definitely going to go for the eight minute ones. Although if my track record with ocean monuments is anything to go by, we will probably not need all three of these in order to accomplish what we want to do today. But even so, probably best to err on the side of caution and make several of these potions. The other potions I'm going to take will be potions of night vision, although I'm not entirely certain how helpful that will be because the update aquatic has done some strange things with the way water vision works. So we're gonna brew one of these up anyway because chances are it might be useful, but don't count on this being the most useful thing in future. Either way, a golden carrot is what will get you a night vision potion. Same again with the nether wart first, but then you can throw a golden carrot in there. Golden carrots, we've made them before, I think, but they are just golden nuggets around a carrot in much the same way as we made glistering melon a couple of episodes ago. That is really all we need to do. Now let's throw some redstone dust in each of these as well so we get the maximum duration. We also have some strength two potions brewed up in here thanks to some blaze powder brewing previously. And I don't think we will necessarily need these, but it might be worth taking one if you're not entirely confident or if you don't have a sharpness five sword or anything like that if you've been relying on other slightly less powerful weapons most importantly i think for this ocean monument raid now is the time to have depth strider 3 on your boots if you do not have depth strider don't even think about taking on one of these ocean monuments because it's probably not going to go well for you one last thing i am going to bring along with me is an ender chest so that once we get to the other location i can swap out my elytra for a diamond chest plate because having the best possible armor is also going to help especially if this is your first time raiding a monument Monument. Let's make our way back through the nether. I'm actually going to fly to the portal because it's quite a distance away and I didn't quite want to make a bridge just yet when I'm saving resources for other builds. But once we're there, I should be able to tell you the last thing you will need to get kitted out, which is, as I've already mentioned, a bucket of milk. So let's go and see these cows over here <laughs> and right click on them to get some milk with an empty bucket. Gotcha. All right. And the reason for the bucket of milk will become clear shortly. But for now, let's do what I said I was going to do. Swap out the elytra for this protection chest plate. We'll put the elytra away in there. We can leave the fireworks in there as well. Definitely won't need the flint and steel because let's face it, we're not setting fire to anything while we're down there. And I think we are good to go. So I'm going to drink a potion of night vision followed by a potion of water breathing. That way, when I notice the night vision running out, I also know that my water breathing is going to run out shortly and that I should replenish it. One other great idea for something to bring down here with you is something that can create a water pocket underwater. So something that cannot be waterlogged. And I tend to use signs for this, but I have a feeling that signs have now been given the ability to be waterlogged. So let's actually make a sign instead of one of those. There we go. So let's just test that out really fast over here. Let's pop that down. Yep, <laughs> I've been moving around, so I put a, a D on it. But no, it doesn't. Ah, there we go. Okay, <laughs> that is that is why we needed the bucket of milk. Uh, but anyway, what I was saying was that signs 
no longer create an empty air pocket when they're placed underwater, they automatically become waterlogged. So we won't be able to use those to create an air pocket. Well, that's not a problem because there are a couple of things which I'm still fairly sure are foolproof methods of creating a, an air pocket underwater. The first one being a fence gate. Fence gates are not able to be waterlogged yet. They might change in future, but opening a fence gate like that and standing in here, we can breathe perfectly normally. If you place one at head height, then you won't need to worry too much about water breathing. <laughs> that effect is back. And uh, yeah, you can you can easily just walk into the air pocket created by one of these and not have to worry about the water breathing effect at all. That is in the case of an emergency, in case we run out of water. And unfortunately, that one may have to stay down there unless, you know what, let's, uh, let's get rid of the effect for a second here and then let's uh, reclaim this fence gate because I want to bring two of them with me. The other thing to bring with you is a door. Doors can also create air pockets and cannot be waterlogged. So they are a great place to stand. They're a nice, easy, too high block to place. So you're always going to find a, an air pocket at head height if you want to replenish your, your, uh, <laughs> your supplies of oxygen. And let's grab a bucket of milk. Now, the reason I've been drinking milk so much is because whenever that overlay appears on the screen, that is the picture of an Elder Guardian. And there are three Elder Guardians present in the monument. So our first task is to get rid of them because anytime you go near an ocean monument, it applies an effect called mining fatigue, which prevents you from mining blocks. The main reason for that being that the game designers want you to actually get through the ocean monument without breaking through the walls and getting to stuff easily. So that's the, our first objective is to navigate around this, find the three Elder Guardians and kill them to stop the mining fatigue effect from happening so regularly. Now you'll notice swimming around the edge of the monument right now are these guardians. These things look kind of like, oh, there we go. There's the effect again. <laughs> we won't bother removing it quite yet. They look like animated blocks of prismarine with little thorns sticking out the side of them. And they are very mobile. Once one of them spots you, they will actually laser you. They will send out a laser beam coming from their eye like so. If I get down close to this one, he'll probably start doing it. There we go. And once that charges up fully, You'll notice the color changes from pink to a kind of yellow, and once that charges up fully, it will just hit you. If it stayed locked onto you for all of that time, it's going to hit you. So the best way to avoid getting hit by these guys is to break their line of sight by dodging behind a block or traveling a decent distance away. There is another strategy which we will get into once we're in the monument, but I think I've talked enough. I think it's probably time to drink our potions. Like I said, night vision first, and then water breathing, and then let's get down in here and see if we can mix it up a little bit. Now, the first thing we want to do is head for the entrance, which is looks like it's going to be on the opposite side of the monument, so we're going to have to do some quick swimming over here. This is where Death Strider really comes in handy, and a potion of swiftness would not have been a bad idea either. But yep, looks like we're getting lasered already. Going to try and stay low down here. <laughs> the stealth approach is one that I approve of. Now let's get in through the front door here. The entrance is always where these archways are, so make sure you find that first step into the monument and take a look around. This place is a maze, and the maze in here is procedurally generated, meaning that it will be different in more or less every single monument you go into. There are set combinations of rooms. There will be different rooms all throughout the monument, and they will look the same in different monuments, but they're not going to be in the same order, if that makes sense. So you'll have to do a little bit of exploring each time you go into one of these to try and find your way around. Now we are looking for guardians which are about twice the size of the guardians we have already seen, and they usually occur in three separate locations. One will always be at the top of the kind of pyramid structure we have here. One of them will always be in a room with a large central pillar, and one of them is usually towards the front of the monument around here. Yep, this is the room with the large central pillar, and there is our first Elder Guardian. Now these guys will attack you in the same way that the other guardians will, and you'll notice that whenever their thorns are out, whenever they have those giant kind of spikes sticking out of them, that is when attacking them will also damage you. So you've got to be a little bit careful about that. But you'll notice if you charge towards them, there we go, that's our first one down. If you charge towards a guardian, whether it's a regular guardian or an elder guardian, they retract the spikes and try and hide from you. And it's only when they're cornered or they feel like they're confident in attacking that they can bring those spikes back out and they can try and attack you again. So an effective way of dealing with these guardians is actually to charge at them and see if they run away. Because if they run away, then you've probably got a, a decent advantage. Now, 
when when that Elder Guardian died, it dropped a sponge, a wet sponge, and some prismarine shards. Prismarine shards are the ingredients required to make prismarine and prismarine bricks here. Also, sea lanterns in combination with prismarine crystals, which are a drop that you will get from the regular guardians. And as you can tell, there are a lot of regular guardians in here. They will spawn in a decent radius around the monument as well as inside it. So you'll always find a good bunch of these guardians around the place. And uh, you can fight as many of them as you want, but they're not really the objective right now. The objective is to swim around, find a way up to the top of the monument and deal with the next Elder Guardian. You will also find when you're swimming around, you get to one of these rooms. And while it doesn't contain an Elder Guardian, it does contain a secret, which we will get into a little bit later. There is something hiding for us in the middle of all that dark prismarine. So hopefully we should be able to crack that open once the mining fatigue has worn off. And to do that, of course, we have to find the next Elder Guardians. So let's try and swim up here. Let's see if there's another. Yes, there's another hatch up here. And the second Elder Guardian is waiting for us. Looks like that mining fatigue effect just renewed, but we can take care of this guy. And thankfully, having decent armor on me is proving to be a huge help because I've hardly taken any damage since I've been here. The Elder Guardians can pack quite a punch, even more so than the regular Guardians, of course. So it is very important to have good armor when you walk your way in here. It seems like it's going to be a little difficult to find that third Elder Guardian, but being able to swim around these is such a an improvement on how it used to be back when you couldn't really swim. I mean, you could still walk around nice and easily, but the swimming has been improved. The speed is so much faster than it was, so it's actually a lot more easy to navigate around these places now. Right now, I'm looking for anything that will get me towards the left-hand side of the monument, which doesn't seem to be around here anywhere. Let me see if I can get through this way. Okay, okay, this is looking promising. Oh, fantastic, there is a sponge room. Well, this is something we will come back to later because sponges are actually really useful once you've cleared out one of these of its Elder Guardians and you're maybe looking to dry out the interior so that you can walk around it whenever you like. Because sponges can be dried out in a furnace and then as the name suggests, they can actually be used to absorb water from your surroundings, meaning that you can clear out large areas of water like this, usually with only one or two sponges. And there is our third Elder Guardian. We found him at last. Fantastic. And it looks like he's kind of stuck on the pillars here. So once again, we're going to try and press the advantage. Although, don't forget that we need to dodge around the pillars a little bit to defend from that laser attack. Make sure you've got some food on you so you can heal up as well. And this should be the final Elder Guardian dealt with. Fantastic stuff. Now let's see quite how much mining fatigue we have left. Well, it looks like it renewed about two and a half minutes ago. So we've got two and a half minutes left, just under two minutes of our night vision and our water breathing left. And I think I might drink the bucket of milk now so I can show you exactly what that was doing this whole time. Buckets of milk remove all potion effects from the player, regardless of whether or not they are good or bad. So I'm going to drink that now. My night vision, my water breathing, and the mining fatigue are all going to go away. And so I pretty much instantly need to drink another potion of water breathing and a potion of night vision so I can have the advantage back and see around here. So notice that night vision really does make a difference in these places. It's a little bit easier to see now that there are improvements to underwater vision across the board and that the night vision effect hasn't actually been taken away but you can still <laughs> you can still see quite how much of a difference that makes and now we don't have mining fatigue anymore and with the elder guardians dead you won't have to worry about not being able to mine through blocks so now we can actually mine out the walls of this place and do more or less whatever we want with it the first thing i usually do is take out this dark prismarine because this is one of my favorite blocks in the whole game it's really quite versatile looks very modern and can be used in a whole variety of builds so i wouldn't mind grabbing some of that to use in future. And if anything, that's probably what I'm going to end up doing with the other ocean monuments we saw along the way, is raid them like this for their dark prismarine and maybe an extra supply of sponge and then probably leave them alone after that. The other thing a lot of people will raid these monuments for is these. These are sea lanterns and they are a light source similar to glowstone but with a completely different look. You can just grab them with a silk touch pickaxe or if you break them they will break down into prismarine and prismarine crystals where you need five of them and four prismarine shards 
to make a new lamp. And those are one of the great treasures of these monuments because they were a new light source when they were added into the game in Minecraft 1.7 or 1.8, I forget which. I think it was 1.8 that added Guardians. And they are, to be honest, one of the better light sources in the game in terms of aesthetics because glowstone people find kind of like lumpy and ugly a lot of the time. Redstone lamps require redstone current to be turned on, but these are a nice, modern, and fairly, like, generic-looking light source. They can pass for lights in a whole variety of settings. They're not necessarily, like, attributed to one aesthetic or the other, so you could put them in a medieval build and just have them be like a nice, bright lamp. So I imagine the question on a lot of people's lips right now is, Am I going to make a guardian farm? And the answer to that is yes, eventually. Not today and probably not for the next few episodes because I will need a lot of resources in order to do that. But I do plan on making a guardian farm at some point in this series. If you can't tell, I plan on doing as much as I possibly can in this series. I plan on covering a whole lot about survival Minecraft and how you can you know, exploit various mechanics and use various mechanics to farm resources for your Minecraft world. I imagine another question a lot of other people will be asking is what on earth is a guardian farm? And so I may as well explain that briefly too. These of course are guardians and they will drop prismarine shards and prismarine crystals allowing you to make basically all of the blocks you see here with the exception of dark prismarine which needs some prismarine shards and some ink. Much like we did with the spider farm where we turned it into a resource farm for string, it is possible to turn a, an ocean temple and the spawning radius that the guardians will spawn in into a kind of farm for guardians where they will be put in a, a position to die easily, you'll be able to collect the drops automatically and we'll be able to make as much prismarine as we want. Not only that, but if done right, guardians can actually be a great source of experience as far as overworld farms go. So it may be beneficial to convert one of these into an experience farm to use long term for mending our tools, getting levels to enchant new tools and items, that kind of stuff. But the main thing I am after, of course, is a near unlimited supply of dark prismarine to build with. So <laughs> at some point we will probably need to build a squid farm as well, so we can have enough ink sacks for all of that. But for now, I'm quite happy raiding this ocean monument for the resources it's got. We've already got two and a half stacks of dark prismarine, so we're in pretty good stead right now. And I've only got a minute and a bit of night vision left, so I will try my best to find that room I mentioned earlier, the one that had the large structure in it. It isn't this way, it should be towards the back of the monument, and of course we can break through walls here and there if we need to, but we shouldn't need to because it should be through one of these rooms here. There it is. There is the core of the ocean monument, and this is made entirely out of dark prismarine, and in the center, it contains eight blocks of gold, which is kind of the treasure that you get from breaking into one of these monuments and <laughs> being able to break through the blocks at last. So, so once you've killed the, uh, the Elder Guardians, you'll be able to break this entire thing apart without mining fatigue and claim the treasure inside. Now, if you're a little bit sneaky, you could always come in here, get to the core room, drink a bucket of milk to remove the, the mining fatigue effect, and then run out again. But it's actually kind of more fun to take on the ocean monument, kill the Elder Guardians inside, and gut the thing to turn it into a farm. Now, my second night vision potion and water breathing potion have just run out, so I'm going to make a dash for the exit before I start to drown. But this is where our handy uh, fence gate should come in. Uh, I think we can make our way out through here. We can probably just break through the ceiling at this point. I think that should be fine. Yes, okay, we can make our way out from here. Now, if I know which way the island is, it should be just over there. There we go, we've breached, we've made it. <laughs> Fantastic. So we didn't need to use the air pocket trick at all, but that's always good to know if you need it, because, yeah, you might need it sometimes down there. If it's difficult to find the Elder Guardians, it takes a little while, believe me. So, uh, yeah, you'll probably need to use the air pocket trick once or twice. In the good old days, you used to be able to use a bucket of water, and standing up against a wall, emptying your bucket of water, and then filling it up using the block that your head was in, uh, used to be able to <laughs> kind of replenish your air supply instantly. But now, the problem is, as your air supply diminishes, you actually need to spend a little bit of time outside of water to bring it back up to full. So they kind of, they patched that out as of the 1.13 update. But 
There we go, folks. That is an Ocean Monument raid done as pretty much as textbook as I could manage. I think we uh, we did all right in there. We only ended up using two sets of our potions. And in future, we will be back here to claim even more resources and eventually convert the entire thing into a farm that we can farm lots of resources and experience from. But for now, that's going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.